Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, Vice Chairman, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, this is an agenda item that we discussed previously in the agenda, in the agenda review. It's a request to have an authorization from the board for the superintendent and the chair to submit a letter to the State Board of Education to uh, indicate that, and this is for FY14, this is the time period behind us, that uh, we did not attain the state targeted 65% direct classroom expenditure level in the 14 budget uh, and request a waiver from that. The last page of the agenda item is a pro forma, pro forma state document. We don't put any numbers on this page. The state models how this document does the calculations, okay? And based on the state document, uh, we went from a 61% expenditure level in 13 to a 62% expenditure level in 14. This is a state prescribed document. Now the state does roundings on this document. We're all aware of that, okay? Within the numbers, okay, they're decimal places, but the state rounds uh, in the format of this document. Uh, it's not an unusual request for the waiver. We've gotten it once. A number of school districts asked for it, and I think they're in the process of uh, going in front of the state board right now. Thank you, Dr. Bell. Uh, is there any discussion? Uh, Mr. Jester? Yes, uh, Dr. Bell. Uh, it says for FY15, or you gave me the numbers for FY15, the operating expenditures are $959 million. Keep in mind we're two-thirds of the way into 15. What your request right. was budgeted. Well, right. I, okay, but let me finish. I answered, we said that there's a budget for operating expenditures and a budget for expenditures, okay? And those are the numbers that you got. But we still have a third of the year to go. Sure, okay. The numbers for FY14 and FY13 are more or less the same in that the operating expenditures budget as defined by the state is a lot more than our general operating budget as reported in the financial reports. Certainly. Um, w what accounts for that difference? The state DE46, which we report on every year, pulls information from it to do, to do this calculation. And they pull from funds outside of the general operating budget. As we define it. As we have defined it and as the state defines it, yes. Right. It seems like it would be a good idea for those numbers um, to be reported. Are those ever reported to the board, that, those numbers that are in the difference there? If you look closely at the monthly financial report, there are other funds that are reported in the monthly report outside of the general operating budget. So they are reported. We report special revenue, which is all the grants. We report, report athletics. We report school nutrition. Those are not, strictly speaking, in the general operating budget. Uh, good. So those are reported on, and we do look at those. It's just not part of that $800 million well, for FY15. They're not FY part of the general operating budget, yes, sir. Oh, fantastic. That's great. Over the last few years, um, and I would expect for FY15, the uh, fiscal year we're in now, we're en route to uh, need that waiver again. It's uh, looking that way anyway, correct? There are a number of variables that would go into answering that question. You're concerned about the instructional expenditure level as well. Correct. Keep in mind that this calculation is formatted by the state with a numerator and a denominator. So when we spend more that hits the numerator, it also increases the denominator. But if, we, but, but if the ultimate administration of the budget produces a numerator holding or increasing and a denominator reduction, the percentage will go up. And what we know now is that the format that the state, when we just hit the run button and this, this classroom expansion report is run, we don't populate it at all, okay, that they round. Once you get to like 58.52%, it'll round to 59. The state report will round. We don't round it. Oh, sure. Mr. And Chairman, uh, Mr. Just, if I can add, it might help with some clarity. Mr. Bell, you may want to elaborate on it. Uh, consider the investments we made in the fund balance. Yes, sir. And how that uh, often is overlooked, not counted by the state. 
That's correct. But That's in correct. fact, the fact that we went broke and have a $14 million deficit, I couldn't think of anything that's been more negatively impactful on instruction and academic growth and achievement was the fact that we allowed this district to run into a huge, unprecedented deficit. And in order to continue to build upon uh, improving instruction and academic uh, growth in our district, we have to rebuild the fund balance because that is the only thing that allows us to begin to project and to plan as to how we can make additional investments where they are needed to help our teachers, students, parents work together to improve academic growth in our district. So if the state, if this form, which it doesn't, would allow us to count this, what, 50 plus million dollars we've invested first to eliminate the deficit and now to grow the fund balance, then that percentage would look quite yes, differently. And I think you can't look at it independent. Right. That's, that's a very good point, sure. Mr. Thurman. If you just take the incremental growth in the fund balance for 14, that's $37.3 million. We started 14 with a $3.6 million fund balance. We ended it at a 40.9. That increment of 37.3, if you go to this last state reporting form in the agenda item, you add the 37.3 to the numerator, okay? you will end up with a 65.74%. So I think the superintendent's point is well taken that the positive addition to the fund balance would push us over the 65%. Uh, it's very important that we get within a decent range in the fund balance. We're knocking on the door right there. We're not there yet. So over the last couple of years, revenues have increased, but we've had to make some really tough decisions and um, we're going towards the adding to the fund balance right now. And, um, but to back up the superintendent's point, that's not something that the state formula considers. It's not, they don't pull, right. that, that doesn't get pulled into this calculation. So we definitely get dinged for trying to build up our fund balance or digging ourselves out of the hole that we were, we were in. Yes, sir, absolutely. And, and to be honest, it was the right decision. It, it, it was, there was no other decision could have been made other than the first rebuild the fund balance. And as we <coughs> strengthen the fund balance, thanks to Dr. Bell's leadership, we've been able to make more investments into what the state would refer to as instruction. It, it really created the opportunity for us to do it. Because if we had just followed this state formula, we would have spent the money and not invested in the fund balance, and we'd still be in a lot of trouble today, uh, but for those decisions. And it's because of Dr. Bell's leadership and uh, his folk and the managers all across the district, and of course the board, who set rebuilding the fund balance as the number one priority. Thank you. Um, oh, well, what I, one, 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 just one moment, if you don't mind. Um, for the sake of equity in terms of questions on the part of the board, I would like for the board members to ask no more than three questions and then let everybody take the turn and then we go back to individuals. Sure. Can I make just one more comment? Okay, if you will. Oh, I was just going to say, we've built up a, a respectable fund balance, and in FY16, I look forward to us um, being over that 65% uh, if possible. Thank you. Mr. Orson? So that's sort of where I was headed, and I guess this is for a challenge for the superintendent and for the our CFO and for all of us. Uh, I think one thing we need to remember is that that 65% is a floor, right? It, it, it's not a ceiling. <laughs> and I think we're not alone. School systems treat it sort of as a, we get to the 65, we you know, wipe our brow and we're all happy about it. And, uh, and I, think, I think, I hope we can all agree that the, the most bang for our buck comes from the investments we make in our classrooms with our teachers and that directly benefit students. And that's not to say, it's not realistic to say 99% of what we do will go in the classroom, but I, I would like to ask as we go into the fiscal year 2016 budgeting cycle, and that's coming up pretty quickly, that we be more ambitious in terms of the investments we're going to talk about making in the classroom, because those are ultimately policy decisions. They rest with the board and the decision about how we're going to invest, but we, we need your leadership and your guidance on this. I think we have an opportunity to be a leader as a district to say, hey, we know that 65% is a floor, Good, thank but you. we're going to really be 
very strong-minded, strong-willed about trying to raise that significantly above the 65 percent because I think we will see a great return on investment um, from doing that. What's that? And we'll also demonstrate leadership, I think, not only in our county but across school districts in the state. But, and I don't mean to suggest that that's easy. I have. We know that, you know, we, that if it was easy, right, everyone would be doing it. Yeah, but I think we have a great opportunity and great opening to do that. And, that, and that's what I, you know, we can't Atlanta, remake Florida. history, and I very much appreciate the effort we've made as a district in terms of rebuilding that fund balance. But I think now everything we should be doing now should be forward-looking. Yeah. And the most forward-looking oh, should right. be about yeah, how do we optimize the amount okay. of investment we make into the classroom Thanks. and say to the state, quite frankly, 65% is not That's ambitious yeah. enough when it comes to what we're spending on our children. Mr. Chair, I, I agree if I may respond. Yeah, thank you. Uh, right ahead. I agree uh, with everything that's been said. Uh, caveat being, when you've been living in the basement, the first floor looked pretty yeah, sweet. Yeah, so far so good. Which is where we've been. So I'm, I will celebrate the fact that we're on the first floor uh, for the first time. Uh, secondly, uh, I think it's important too, uh, the oh, major investment time? that this board has empowered the administration to make is to address the I've issue of paying everything. In the district, particularly with our school-based personnel, uh, uh, yeah, that no, would I be a significant number, and that is instruction. And if the board and I know that the chair is committed, and we're committed, if we fulfill that commitment to our uh, school-based personnel, uh, I don't have any doubt. Yeah, that yeah, the floor uh, will be a floor, and we will soon be moving towards the ceiling because it's going to take that, not just in 16. But this has to be a multi-year yeah. commitment because we are that far behind and we have fallen yeah, that far. Uh, we're no longer competitive with at least three of the five major uh, districts and uh, it's, it will impact some this year, but there has to be a multi-year commitment really to bring us back in line. And that's going to impact the percentage that, that I think uh, you're pointing towards that I agree with you 100%. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, Mr. McMahon. Go to Ms. Turner first. She hadn't spoken all, all day yet. It's sort of hard to do sometimes. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say, not to belabor the point, I think what Mr. Thurman has said would echo exactly what I feel. We, we, we can learn from our history. History will be our teacher if we let it. We can learn from our history, but we don't need to belabor where we were. What I think we need to look at is where we're headed. And I do believe from what I've read here and what Dr. Bell has reported on continuously is we're headed in a trajectory towards even improvement. So I expect that the fiscal year 16 will render the results that we can all say we're proud of. It may not be the ceiling, but progress is progress. And I think that to belabor the point and co continue to um, beat a dead horse is not a good use of our time. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Turner. Uh, Mr. McMahon. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to everybody for their comments regarding this most important part of our financial discussion. Um, yeah, the state has set their, their level for classroom expenditures, and we have made huge strides in a very short period of time. From 14, 15 million in deficit, now we're expected at the end of this year, hopefully 50 plus million in reserves. I, and just if we status quo stay right where we are from a revenue standpoint, property tax standpoint, even an expense standpoint, we'll have the reserves to where we can invest that $37 million to Mr. Bill's, Dr. Uh, CFO Bill's point in the classroom next year. And with the board's support, you know, I would I'd like to make a motion right now that with the board's support that we make that 65% of uh, uh, an initiative um, a requirement for our budget for next year. So uh, with that being said, I'll, I'll motion it um, for 65% of our revenue to be spent in the classroom for FY16. Second, any discussion? Hold on a second. Dr. Bell, how, comf com how confident are you with that uh, um, approximation of getting 65% in, in 2016? Dr. Irwin, if you, since there was a motion on the floor, let's finish that and we get in discussion and right. take care of your comment, if you will. It's been moved and second <coughs> that we um, 
approve the 65 percent um, target for year 16. 16. Uh, is there any discussion? Can I just make a suggestion? This is a, to your because yep. I because we're not really doing formal business here. Right. I think it's more about getting a sentiment that that's if there's agreement to, to Dr. Irwin's question and others to get you, th that where we'd like to be by the time you bring a budget test. Is that a fair, is that a companion so, to your question that? Yeah. So Mr. McMahon, you take your. Let me jump in here. Um, there isn't anything that's been noticed on the agenda for this kind of action. Um, so unless we can articulate an emergency that would require this kind of notice, um, I would recommend that there not be a formal motion, but if you would like to express a board aspiration that this is um, an expectation that you would like to see, certainly you can express that sentiment, but I don't know that there's any basis for a formal board motion and vote at this time. So, um, I think I Mr. McMahon, you would take your vote back? Your yeah, yeah, I do want to comply with legal <laughs> process first and foremost before I get all uh, excited about our financial situation <laughs> and our progress. So with that being said, thank you, legal, for keeping me in my compliance lane. <laughs> and I withdraw my motion and would love to hear our discussion for the rest of the board. Thank you. And then about Dr. Erd, I'm sorry. Dr. Bill, back to you. How confident do you feel with Mr. McMahon's suggestion of 65% for 2016? Let me just say, is what our council pointed out, it's already a state rule, okay? And as I said earlier, the state test is a rounding document, which is the last page of the agenda. So in point of fact, we're actually about 61.6. Now the state rule says you, you increase by 2% or the 65, okay? The reading we got is the 61.6 gives us a 62, right. okay? So if we get to, you know, 62, we're shooting for 64. If we get to a 63.52, it'll show a 2% increase. So there's, fle there's flexibility in this, okay, just because the way the state rounds it. So two is as good as a 65. Now, in relation to where we are actually going and not using the variance report, which is a real position versus a theoretical position. Look at page one of the report. You'll see that in instruction, a year ago, we had expended 183.4 million. Today, we're at 193 million. We're 10 million ahead of where we were a year ago, not using the variance report, but using page one of the actual monthly report. Uh, Mr. Chairs, can I make a suggestion, sir? If you will. Uh, last year, what was very helpful to the administration and to myself was the board developed a list of priorities and goals. And I think if we would just repeat that meeting where the board could express its wishes as Dr. Bell begins this process, I, I believe we can reach Mr. McMahon's uh, expressed desire. And then it gives us a broader roadmap on which to travel as we begin to build this budget. And second thing, and I, I never dreamed I'd be the most conservative one here, but, you know, I, not too long ago, I was sitting at, in a similar, not this position, but another position. We had $1.2 billion in the trust fund to pay unemployment benefits. And eight months later, we had nothing. It tempers you. And the only thing I, the only caveat, the only caution I raise is, as my mother would always tell me when I was a little boy, don't get in front of yourself, right? Let it happen. We're moving in the right direction, right, Dr. Preston? He's from the country like me. He know what that means. <laughs> Does anybody really know what that means? Don't get in front of yourself. But anyway, that meeting, <laughs> folks in Crawfordville, Georgia, they know what that means. Don't get in front of yourself. So exactly. let's let the process work. I think we've, last year was very instructive. If we can have that meeting, Mr. Chair, uh, as sooner rather than later, where the board can express its wishes or its desires and expectations, it, then we can respond with a document and then the board, of course, react to it to see whether or not we actually achieved or in some form or fashion 
the expectation that you all have grant, expect uh, that is uh, passed on to us. Is, is that fair? Yes, sir. And that was like a 30 or 40, I can't remember, but it was a great meeting that we had either before or after a, call, a regular work session, as I recall. Was that right, Mr. Bell? Was it a work session when we had? Yeah, yeah, and we yeah, just had some time to deal with this. Is, and people bought their lists and said, this is what we'd like to see in the budget going forward. With that said, um, I would like for the, the, each board member at our next April meeting to bring their wish list. And we have a, a Margaret, if you would uh, make sure that's on the agenda uh, for that discussion. Uh, and we will do it exactly the way we did it last year from a goal standpoint. Is that okay with the board? Mr. Orson, for your comment. Yeah, so a couple things. One, it might be appropriate for our meeting to have a committee of the whole, adjourn to a committee of the whole so we can have a more free-flowing discussion. Um, and that's where I put nurses on the list last year, so we've made progress here. Um, one of the things I'd like, though, and this goes back to my earlier comment, is that us making suggestions in a vacuum is a little bit hard. And so if we're... If we look at 65% as the floor, the state mandated floor that we know, not only us, but a number of systems don't comply with, I think it would help for us to have a model somewhere here that if we said, and this is a hypothetical, we'd like to be at 67%. What are the choices we would have to make? What's the impact? Because if we do these things in a vacuum, I think we're ill-equipped as a board without some guideposts about what the consequences or the results of that decision would be. You know what, what? What would the trade-offs be based on our projected budgets? And I think we, we, and our boards all the time get accused of sort of making decisions or trying to make suggestions without understanding the implications of it. And quite frankly, we know the previous board did at times with sometimes disastrous consequences for some of the choices that were made. And so, I think as part of this process, we would be more effective ultimately as a board in coming down to the bu a final budget, which is again a policy decision that rests with the board to know what the implications were if we were to say it be at 66% or 67%. Something obtainable, not crazy, mindful of your conservatism, your inherent conservatism, Mr. Superintendent. Uh, but My last name is Thurman. Right. So, but I think that would help <laughs> us in having a, a more robust and meaningful conversation as we get into the budget session. And, and I, I don't mean to burn, but if you could give some thought to that. Okay. Tell us, if we're going to go to 66 or 67 percent, what does that mean we're going to have to do in terms of shifts in order to try to get to numbers like that? If and I recall correctly, um, last year that idea, that concept uh, came from the superintendent. And then the board took the initiative. The staff at the superintendent needs to bring those type of issues, I'd like the CFO, we as an, as individual board members, not knowing the implications of our decision making individually, uh, of course collectively, when we put it all together, uh, we state exactly what our desires are. But we should rely on, when we stop relying on our staff to give us the appropriate information and data to make good decisions, then that's when we run into the problems. And if you do the history of boards who have gotten into trouble, well, those are individual boards who forgot about the staff and made individual demands on the staff that ended up uh, catastrophic, catastrophic uh, from that standpoint. Uh, Dr. Irwin. Dr. Bell, one quick question, pretty basic. How much money are we talking about to get from you said 61.7 to 65 percent. Just ballpark. <clears throat> Dr. Erick, that's a very good question, and I'll tell you why. And my staff and I have been looking at this. The calculation is a recursive calculation. What I mean by that is this. If you're at 60 over 100, you're at 60 percent. If you add 5 to the 60, you go to 65, but the 5 also has to go in the denominator. So that calculation I just described right there, if you add 5 to the 60, you'll only be at 61.9. So as you add to your numerator, your denominator will drag you down, okay? So to, to actually get to 
65 percent cool is going to be something between 50 and 60 million dollars. Okay? So that's w one thing that the chairman is pointing out. Listen to your staff, okay, before you set these hard goals. Dr. Johnson. M Mr. Orson. Dr. Bell, to that last statement, I have a slight issue with it because that presumes that you don't shift within existing categories, right? If you add to the numerator, that doesn't presume, that does not necessitate that you're actually adding to the denominator. You can make changes within the categories and increase that percentage. So I think we just have to be, it's only recursive if you're assuming nothing else changes. And so I think, again, this is the sort of thing we've got to have a robust discussion about and that includes the priorities we make. And that, that's why I've asked, I mean, some of the things we have to look at about where we expend money that fall outside of that instructional category and whether not only are we adding to the overall number, but are we shifting amounts from current expenditures? And we need to also evaluate our current investments. And in this business, uh, the three major areas, uh, you know, up until now, of course, it was the CRCT, the EOCT, and your graduation rate. It's not how much you spend, it's the return on the investment. So here I am being the most conservative one again. I ain't for just throwing money at a problem. <laughs> I like that. I just thought that, that's, that didn't even sound right coming out of my mouth. Did it? But you know, we need to really look at how the money is being invested and not just how much is being spent. So it's two different things that we really need to evaluate. And what we would like from the administration is to look at what return on investment do we get from this budget? Are we improving academically? Are we improving the graduation rate? Are we increasing teacher quality? Is parent engagement growing? Those are the ways that you actually value these investments and we'll be happy to have that discussion and bring forward data that we think uh, that might be able to support that. Last comment, Mr. Uh, McMahon. Yeah, thank you, Chair. It just sounds, Superintendent Thurman, that you had a little bit of um, a former board member, Thad Mayfield, <laughs> incarnated with the return on investment talk. So that was very, very uh, good for me. And Mr. Chair, for you to move this towards a consent. Is there any opposition to placing this item on the consent agenda? Hearing none, this item will be placed on the consent agenda.